Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, yesterday we took a rather long and quite in-depth look at the Threadripper 2990WX and 2950X. In short, the 2950X really impressed us with solid performance across the board at a super competitive price. The 2990WX though, that was a bit less impressive with mixed performance and a very high asking price. Currently Windows 10 is mostly being blamed for the mixed results and perhaps rightfully so. We'll have to look into this a bit further and keep our fingers crossed that we actually get an update in the not too distant future. In the meantime, there is something else we can address, something that a large number of people uh, did voice concern for, uh, not just about our testing, but the testing of most other media outlets. And that was that we tested just a single application at a time. We had always planned to make a separate multitasking focus benchmark and I said as much in yesterday's video. While editing and wrapping up that video, uh, I began looking into multitasking performance and after an additional two days of testing, we got some more results to discuss. For this test, the Threadripper 2990WX has been compared directly with the Core i9-7980XE and we have five batches of multitasking benchmark results to check out. All of the testing was conducted using a stock out of the box setting, so no CPU overclocking at all, and both CPUs were cooled with a 240mm closed loop uh, cooler installed on each CPU. Uh, there was some jumping up and down in the comment section, not a lot, but some people were claiming that the Wraith Ripper was causing the 2990WX to throttle and that's why our benchmarks were, were mixed. Uh, but just to clear all that up, the Wraith Ripper doesn't cause the stock 2990WX to throttle in any benchmarks that we ran. Uh, keeps it very cool as we showed in our review. We even showed footage of it running some uh, core heavy workloads and it was holding really respectable clock speeds, 3.3 uh, gigahertz. So that's what you'd expect to see out of that CPU. So not sure uh, where all that's coming from. Anyway, moving on, both systems have been configured with 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, uh, each using eight eight gigabyte modules. And this did limit the 2990WX to DDR4 3000, while the 7980XE could run much higher, but we settled with low latency DDR4 3200 memory to try and keep things even, and I suppose somewhat realistic. Now the following graphs might look a little odd at first, especially compared to what you're probably used to seeing from us, but I'm hoping this format will be easier to follow as it gives you all the information on screen at once. Anyway, let's get into the benchmarks and I'll explain as we go. Okay, so first up, we're gonna look at how the 2990WX and 7980XE compare when running Blender Open Data and 7-Zip. Please note the results here show how the CPUs perform in each application individually. So that is to say Blender was executed and then completed before moving on to testing 7-Zip. So these are just standard benchmark results. Here the 2990WX completed the BMW 27 workload 36% faster and the Barbershop workload 25% faster when compared to the Core i9 processor. Then with 7-Zip we see the 2990WX is 116% faster for decompression work, but 35% slower for compression work. Now let's redo these benchmarks, but with Blender and 7-Zip running simultaneously. 7-Zip will be on a continuous loop while Blender runs its standard batch of tests. So here we see a few interesting things. The 2990WX is now 58% faster for the BMW 27 workload and 30% faster for the barbershop workload. However, the 7-zip performance is less favorable. Here the 2990WX was 116% faster previously when looking at the decompression performance, and now it is 3% slower. That said though, whereas it was 35% slower previously for the compression test, it's now only 16% slower. Basically, the 2990WX was already mighty impressive in the Blender rendering test, and adding 7-Zip to the mix makes it look more impressive. But the massive advantage it did have in 7-Zip's now gone, making it inferior in both the compression and decompression tests. The 7980XE certainly appears to be prioritizing 7-Zip, while the 29WX is prioritizing Blender. Or at least this is how it's working within Windows 10. Next up, I'm testing with Handbrake and Realbench. For Handbrake, I have an H.264 4K 60fps video that I'm converting to H.265 4K 60fps, and I'm reporting the average frame rate as well as the total render time. Then Realbench will be running its heavy multitasking workload on a loop. The 2990WX doesn't do all that well in Handbrake, and here it was 31% slower than the 7980XE. Uh, it's also not great in Realbench either, taking 10% longer to complete a single pass. So let's combine these two tests and run them simultaneously. With both applications running simultaneously, the 2990WX is now 17% slower than the 7980XE in Handbrake, 
which is a reasonable improvement, but of course it is still slower. However, while we did see a reduced margin in handbrake, we see the margin increase a little for Realbench. The 2990WX is now 15% slower, so overall it wasn't really able to make up ground on the 7980XE in this multitasking benchmark. One of the worst results for the 2990WX seen in our day one coverage was found when testing with Veracrypt, the one gigabyte test. So I'm combining that test with one of the best results for the 32 core processor, which was seen when testing with Corona. Here the 2990WX was 28% faster than the 7980XE, and as we've seen, it always seems to do very well in rendering workloads. However, for Veracrypt it was 47% slower, so not a great result that one, but anyway, let's run them simultaneously now and see if that changes anything. As we saw in the first series of multitasking benchmarks, AMD seems to prioritize rendering workloads while Intel favors the more memory sensitive workloads. The 7980XE took almost six times longer than the 2990WX to complete the Corona benchmark, while it only saw a 7% reduction in decryption performance. Meanwhile, the 2990WX saw a 34% reduction in decryption performance and a 61% increase in rendering time. So the 32 core processor does appear more balanced here, and so it should be with 14 more cores to play with. Still, we do have mixed results for the 2990WX. It was absolutely amazing in Corona and horrible in Veracrypt, and that's true whether you run these applications individually or simultaneously. Moving on, this time we have three applications, Handbrake, CPU-Z, which is a synthetic benchmark, and then 7-Zip. Here's how they all perform individually on each CPU. The 2990WX is 22% slower in Handbrake, 75% faster in CPU-Z, and again, we see the same mixed 7-Zip performance as we discussed earlier. Running all three applications simultaneously does provide some interesting results. Whereas the 2990WX was 22% slower in handbrake previously, it's now 29% faster. So that's a very impressive result. That said, it does take a big hit in CPU-Z, but even then it was still 21% faster than the 7980XE. And then finally, even in 7-Zip, we find positive results for the 32-core processor. It managed to maintain a good chunk of its decompression performance, and the 7980XE took a big enough hit in the compression test that the 2990WX was able to just edge ahead. So this is the first truly great result that we've seen for the 2990WX in these multitasking benchmarks, especially given that I haven't included a rendering workload to help prop the 32-core processor up. Last up, I have another triple header using Povre, WinRA, and F1 2017. Povre provided the 2990WX with its best result in our day one review, and as you can see, it's 36% faster than the 7980XE in this test. WinRA though isn't very core heavy, but it is extremely memory intensive, so I'll be keen to see if that messes with the Povre performance at all. The 2990WX was 59% slower than the 7980XE when testing with WinRA, or another way of putting it, the 7980XE was 142% faster. Finally, we have F1 2017, and here the 2990WX was 24% slower when comparing the average frame rate and 30% slower for the 1% low result. So now it's time to run everything at the same time. As we've seen time and time again, when multitasking, the 2990WX's advantage in rendering applications is only extended. Whereas it was 36% faster than the 7980XE previously when testing with Povre, it's now 45% faster. Meanwhile, it was 59% slower in WinRA, and now it's just 37% slower. It's still slower, of course, but a greatly reduced margin. However, things do go horribly wrong for gaming performance, and now F1 2017 is completely unplayable. Although the 7980XE did produce a 1% low result of just 34 FPS, this is a little deceiving as the game was very playable and only once or twice per lap did I notice a big lag spike. For the most part, frame rates were up around 100 FPS and it provided a surprisingly good experience. The 2990WX on the other hand was a stuttery mess and would have been impossible to play. Thankfully though, the CAN benchmark did take care of all the driving for me. So again, mixed performance from the 2990WX in this test. Okay, well, I'm now armed with a lot more knowledge in regards to how the 2990WX performs than I was a few days ago when I was in the late stages of wrapping up my initial 2990WX and 2950X review. Uh, that said, the additional information hasn't really changed that much. Uh, throwing more work at these CPUs just provided, I suppose, more mixed results. Uh, whereas you'd expect the 32-core processor to really crush an 18-core processor under these conditions, it just didn't. 
Still, the performance hiccups that we've seen with the 2990WX so far uh, might not all be down to the NUMA configuration, the increased memory latency for half the cores, and the limited per core bandwidth when fully utilized. It's looking more and more like another big culprit here is once again the Windows scheduler, which, to put it plainly, has been known to be a bit garbage. So that being the case, it is certainly possible that a future Windows update could improve things for the 2990WX, and we have already seen this in the past with the first generation Ryzen CPUs. Having said all that, if you are putting down your own hard-earned cash to buy the 2990WX and you're planning on using it with Windows 10, then I'd rather not assume anything here uh, and just work off the information that we currently have. So taking the information that we currently have at hand into full account, I'd buy neither the 2990WX or the 7980XE. Instead, as I said in yesterday's review, I would get the 2950X. The 32 core processor just seems a bit too risky at the moment. The mixed windows performance and the extreme price is sketchy enough, but I'm almost certain by this time next year, AMD will have something significantly better on offer using the seven nanometer process. So from a consumer standpoint, the 2990WX is very poorly timed in my opinion, uh, but from AMD's perspective, I certainly understand why they've released such a product uh, in 2018. Anyway, as always, I will continue to benchmark as updates and new information come in, and I'd love nothing more than to be able to get right back into it with a Windows update, so fingers crossed, I don't have to wait too long. As for this video, that is going to do it for now. I hope you did enjoy the video, and if you did, feel free to hit the like button for us, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work we do with our Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, we do a monthly live stream, Tim and myself, that's a lot of fun. Uh, we also have a Discord chat, Tim and I are very active in the Discord chat, we're there every day answering questions and chatting with the members, and yeah, it's a whole lot of fun. Anyway, thank you for watching, I'm your host Steve, and I'll see you again next time.